I really hope the game doesn't crash. Uh, there's only one way to find out, though, guys. So the moment of truth in three, two, one, and shoot it. Oh, God, it's happening. It's happening. And there's the first one. Hey everybody, it's Moonbow here, and welcome back to more Endless Scrap Mechanic, and today is probably the most exciting day in the history of this game. Guys, on the test branch, we now have explosives. Look at these things right here in front of us. There are two different kinds. They are extremely dangerous and to be handled with caution. So in today's video, though, we're going to be checking them out. We're going to do a whole bunch of different tests. We're going to see what they are capable of, and we're definitely just going to be blowing stuff up. And of course, guys, at any time during the video, if you have any ideas or comments or suggestions that involve these new explosives, then by all means, guys, leave it down below. I am looking forward to seeing what we got with this one. Now, without further ado, guys, it is time to test the explosives. All right, so here we have the large canister as well as the little tiny explosive canister right next to it. I think the design looks absolutely fantastic. We've got explosive signs on it. There is ripped away paint and all sorts of stuff. And I think there's even like nozzles on the top of them. Now, I'm not too sure if maybe these might have an alternate use later on. Uh, maybe, though, they might just be for blowing stuff up. I'm not too sure. So all I know about these, though, is that they explode. Now, I've done some testing, the guys. We can take our connection tool out right here, and here you can see there is no connection point whatsoever on these explosives. So I was thinking maybe we might be able to set up a switch or a timer, or maybe there would have been an internal timer on the explosives, uh, but that is not the case. These things are just completely free sitting. And so one thing I do know though is we can take our spud gun here and maybe we'll just take a few safety steps back and we'll take a shot at the small one right there and you can see it'll just explode after a few moments once the spud makes contact with it and that was actually free sitting so when I hit it with the spud it actually rolled away and then of course we have the large one here Oh my, jeez, oh my god. So, I love the animation here, actually. If we uh, do it one more time here, you can see the entire thing starts expanding. There is even, like, a pressure release on the top there. You can see, look at that, there's steam coming out the top, and there's even, like, a little wick of a flame right after the explosion. Let's see, one more time. Oh my god. Now, I gotta say, though, the camera shake is, is pretty aggressive uh, during all of the test like leaked test footage that they were showing us on Twitter. Uh, I, they never had this much camera shake, so I, I wish there was a little bit less camera shake uh, simply because it really distorts your view of the explosion. Uh, but the small one, of course, I believe it's a little more subtle on the explosion there. So let's actually just get a quick look and see what each one looks like side by side here. All right, so you can see the the bigger explosion definitely has like a larger cloud area. Now let's what if we put like three of these and we'll put this one in the middle and it'll trigger both of them on the sides. Oh man, that's pretty cool. So one thing that I'm very curious about is the destruction capabilities of these explosives right here. So I really want to test a couple things. Now, we all know that cardboard is already destructible. We can shoot our spud guns at it. We can hit it with our hammer and make it disappear from the game. Uh, but of course, I'm no doubt I'm sure this cardboard all around here is going to get disintegrated. But let's just see what happens here. Oh wow, that was that was pretty quick. And look at that, guys. There is absolutely no cardboard left whatsoever. Maybe what if we uh, put something like this here? I just want to see what's going to happen. Like this. This is the large canister. Oh yeah. Now that is what I'm talking about. Look at that, guys. There is smoldering cardboard flying from the sky. Oh man, okay guys, this is a game changer. All right, so here's a large canister with a little bit more cardboard on it. Let's hit that one. Let's see what happens here, get a good view of it. Wow, look at this. Oh, it's it's so epic. All right, all right, so I know it breaks the cardboard. We've, we've proven that, but one thing I'm extremely curious about is what if we change that cardboard out for something like concrete so this is obviously a building material in the game that does not 
actually get destroyed by any physics whatsoever. Uh, but I'm wondering, does the explosive have the power to destroy something that was not previously destructible? Let's see what happens here, guys. We're gonna shoot this. And it explodes. Oh, jeez, look at this. That was concrete. This is concrete. So it is 100% confirmed, guys. These canisters will blow up concrete. Now, let's grab some wood. Let's grab some metal here. All right, so for the sake of speed here, why don't we just do like this? So right here, we're going to put the uh, the wood blocks just like that next to it. We'll cover this one with the concrete. And then this is the final one right here, the true test. We've got some metal right there. All right, so I'm going to trigger this left one with my spud gun. And then it's going to explode in succession, and we will see what happens. All right, guys, so here we go in three, two, one. Blow that one up. Wow, look at this. Listen, you can even hear it landing on the ground. And let's take a look around here. I do not see a single piece of metal anywhere whatsoever. The concrete and the wood, of course, they are both destroyed. So we can pretty much break any material. All right, so we've proven that it'll break any building material in the game. Now, I'm wondering though, what about various other parts? So we have some pylons here. We have some, oh, these poor little duckies. We've got an AC unit and, of course, a sink on the end. So what's going to happen? I'm not sure if these are going to actually get blown up or not. So here we go. Let's do a little test. Oh, boy. Oh, jeez, what an explosion. Now look at this. Everything. Look over here, some smoldering flames, and it's all gone. Wow. But I just got a crazy idea. Yeah, that's right, guys. I am going to send these ducks to space. Let's see what happens. I don't even know how many are up there. We got quite a few of them. Uh, so these poor ducks. I'm sorry, guys. I know they don't deserve this, but this is for the sake of scrap mechanic science in three, two, one. Oh boy, run away. Oh jeez, look at this. These poor little ducks. Look at this. It's a burning duck. Wow. Oh man, this is just so satisfying. All right, so right now I have turned off the foliage density so that we have a nice flat clearing here. And now what I'm going to do is actually build uh, a pretty much some type of blast radius gauge so we can see how far the explosion is actually reaching. All right, so for the first test here, I have four different 16 by 16 pads that extend out from each corner of the small canister. So I'm gonna trigger this and we're gonna see how far out we will get a blast here so we're gonna shoot it and it's gonna blow up look at that all right so now we have ourselves the crater imprint wow so this is actually kind of interesting I only went one thick right here as you can see but now I'm very curious what if we actually made this thicker and we could actually get a depth gauge on it as well so I've got a 16 by 16 cube right here and I decided just to leave it at that because if we actually come over here and measure the blast site even if I go from this farthest point that didn't get destroyed and drag it out you can see that it is much larger than the 16 by 16 uh, this is the small canister of course guys so it's actually not that big of an explosion but why don't we test the small one on the top of this cube here now all right so this is going to be the depth test of the small canister let's get our spud gun out and take the shot here we go Oh man, that is so satisfying. All right, so now we're gonna obviously have to get ourselves a closer look here now. Let's see what that damage is underneath. All right, so wow, this is actually kind of interesting. I was expecting a little bit rounder of a design in the crater itself, but this ended up leaving some perfect cubes in each corner. So that's kind of interesting. So you can imagine if we had this on top of it as well, it would create a spherical uh, imprint of the actual detonation. But guys, this is just the small canister. Let's do the same test except with the large one. All right, so for the large canister, I'm just going to be going straight to the cube test because we are obviously going to get the same imprint there, but we also want to see how deep it is going to go as well. So guys, let's check this out here. I'm going to shoot that large canister and... Oh, wow. 
That is so satisfying. Now let's go check it out. Now this is actually very interesting. So it's leaving the exact same imprint as the other one, just at a much larger scale. You can see we have the same cube pattern around the entire bottom here, as well as a relatively square designed uh, little pit here. So that's really, really interesting actually. Okay, so, so far in this video we have done some various testing and I think we have learned quite a bit about these explosives already as it is. Now, I'm thinking though, there's some more things I want to know and that is of course, are there more ways to trigger these explosives than just by shooting at it like this guys, obviously you can see that's what we've been doing is shooting these explosives, but now, what are some other methods that we could do this? So why don't we actually use a large one? So, of course we've proven the spud gun does work. Now, let's see here, guys. Let's grab ourselves the hammer. Now, I'm wondering, this is... I don't feel safe doing this, guys. Let's take a couple steps up right here. Tap it. Oh, yeah. The hammer definitely works. Wow, that is so crazy. I'm trying to think of some various implementations of triggering these and, you know, making, like, challenges and mini games and stuff like that. Oh, man, that is absolutely awesome. Uh, now, one thing I'm going to point out real quick, though, is I really think they might want to uh, tone down on the camera shake, because if you look at this, we can actually see underneath the entire map, and if you add more canisters, it just makes it even worse, and look at that, guys, so we kind of clip underneath with our cameras, so I'm wondering, maybe it might be an option, we can turn off camera shake, or maybe the, uh, the devs might tweak that camera shake just a little bit. The small canister, obviously, you don't shake nearly as much. Uh, but now, so we know the hammer will activate it. We know the spud gun will. That's pretty much all I have to shoot and hit it with because like we mentioned earlier in the video, there are no connection points whatsoever. So it's not like I could put this on a switch from far away and trigger it by pressing it. Now, there are a few different things that we could do uh, that we'll look for in a moment. But right now, I want to actually test something. What happens if we drop it from really high up? So why don't we take this canister right here, and we're gonna go over to that cliff right there. Alright, so I'm thinking I'm just gonna do it from this height right here. Maybe we will move up to some higher cliff points right there. So what we're gonna do is just drop one of the large canisters there, and uh, maybe we'll just be able to get rid of the lift. Okay, no, I guess we're gonna have to shoot it off the side. There we go. What's gonna happen? It hit pretty hard. Oh, wow, look at that. It blew up. It blew up. Oh my, I'm panicking. I'm panicking. I'm freaking out. That just worked. It just blew up from dropping it from high up. Oh, wow. This changes everything. What else can we test? Oh, boy. So I've got this car here. We're going to drive right into it. I know this is made of cardboard. It could be made of anything, and of course, it'll blow up. But let's see. Can we drive into this with just pure force? Oh, I hit it. I don't think I hit it hard enough, though. All right, I'm going to try this again from a little bit farther away, and maybe this is a little bit smoother of a path as well. We're going to pick up a bit more speed, I think. Boom! Nothing? Okay. Whoa, what the... Okay, I think... I think that would have been hard enough, right? I'm not sure. I mean, we dropped it from the top of the cliff and it hit it, so maybe it doesn't work. I, I'm not too sure, guys, but I mean, I can't leave you guys without an explosion, so why don't we very uh, silly-like... Park this car right next to these explosives. Oh, man. I don't know what's gonna happen here. Let's just hit the bottom one and Oh, jeez! Wow, look at this. The car just completely got disintegrated and there's still some parts sitting around. Oh, man, guys, this is this is game-changing beyond belief. So now I'm kind of wondering what happens to you, the little mechanic, if you're too close to it. So what if we actually just stand right on top of this thing. Let's take a shot at this canister. Oh boy, it blew up. Oh yeah, we got a little bit of air. Oh man, that is awesome. So what happens if we stand on a larger canister? Let's shoot it right there in the top. Oh yeah, definitely way more air. Now I'm wondering though, what if we put like one and two and three? What if we do something like this? Can we, uh, can we get even more launching power? <laughs> okay, yeah, I would definitely say that is a lot more launching power. So what if we did something like uh, maybe, I don't know if it you could call it like a player launcher, but I'm thinking I'm starting to get a little excessive with these canisters, but what if I wanted to kind of launch myself in a specific direction? So I'm going to put all of these like that 
just like this. Now look at this, guys. This is just like a little tiny cubby hole for the mechanic. I'm gonna go right in here and shoot this one right at the back. We're gonna see what happens. Oh yeah. Jeez, oh yeah, that pushed me uh, pretty far actually. Now, what about chain reaction around a cube? Let's see what happens here, guys. I'm gonna shoot this first one. Can I run fast enough? Oh, jeez, whoa. Okay, I definitely couldn't run around fast enough, but look at this beautiful art that we have just carved out of that cube. Wow, this is something you could never get otherwise. Alright, so let's do a little recap here. We've done some various tests with these new explosives. We've checked out the blast radius of the small and the large canisters. We've tested as well the material destruction, so that means we can destroy any material that we want in the game. We also checked it out with various parts as well, those blow up too. We've even tested triggering methods using the spud gun as well as the hammer. We also proved that dropping the canisters from high ground will create the explosion as well. So you guys who have been asking for bombers and stuff like that, you know it's going to be happening. I am so excited. And of course we did a quick little bit of testing with the player interaction with the explosions and you, as you guys saw, it can launch you extremely far but there's one thing that I have wanted to do in this game for so long and now it might actually be possible and that is to destroy an entire building so here guys we have an old decrepit building it's abandoned nobody's using it anymore we got to get rid of it I mean look it's it's in the middle of the desert I don't even know what it's doing out here uh, but we got to get rid of it and the only way we can do that is by rigging it with explosives so I'm gonna put a whole bunch of them in there and we are going to see what happens might crash the game who knows but it's time to do this so I'm gonna rig it up and then I'll see you guys real soon Alright guys, so I have put some explosives there on a few of the floors. I have a feeling I'm going to crash the game because as I was putting the canisters down, the game was lagging really badly. This is a massive skyscraper that I got from the workshop, so I have a feeling, like I said, it's going to crash the game. But let's take a quick look here. You can see I have one right here. This is the first one that we're going to shoot at, and it should create a daisy chain effect right here that's going to continue on right into the center floor right here. Now look at this guys, this is where all the little explosions are going to branch off and hopefully ignite these larger canisters at the extreme points right here. So you can see we have a whole bunch of them and I made them on the roof here as well just to make sure they go up all the way. And then of course if we go up to the second floor we can see a quick look here, uh oh. Alright, that's not a good spot for an explosive, but you can see we have even more of them, and they go all the way up, maybe uh, four floors high, I'm not 100% sure, uh, but I have a feeling this is going to crash the game anyway, like I said, so uh, uh, who knows? But this is the moment of truth, guys. We are going to be doing the first building demolition ever. I cannot wait. I really hope the game doesn't crash. Uh, there's only one way to find out, though, guys, so the moment of truth in three, two... One, and shoot it. Oh god, it's happening, it's happening. And there's the first one. Second. Oh, it's working. Oh, wait. It stopped. Okay, hold on here, guys. Um, It has stopped exploding. I think the door actually did get in the way, but it didn't crash. Wow, all right, so let's just keep the chain going. We're gonna shoot that one. Oh boy, there's another explosion. Even more. Oh man, look at the parts flying everywhere. I am getting next to no frames. Oh, jeez. This is so worth it. It's so worth it. Oh, man. I'm frying my computer for this. Okay, one explosion at a time, guys. It's like we get a picture-by-picture -picture view of this. Oh, my God. This is insane. Come on. Come on, computer. I want to see the aftermath. Please. Oh, there's another big explosion. Oh, ah, there it is. <gasps> wow. The whole building got detached. Oh my god, I'm getting like five frames per second right now. Can I get to the building? I just want to get whatever's broken on a lift right now. Can I do it? All right, there it is, guys. I did manage to get it on a lift. I didn't think I was, but one frames per second was enough to get it done. So look at this, guys. This is 
the bottom section, obviously, there were no explosives any higher than that point right there. Uh, but I think that went off without a hitch, honestly. I mean, yeah, we were lagging a lot. Uh, okay, never mind, actually. It did stall at the front door right there. I, maybe I should have made a bit thicker of a cluster. But look at this, guys. So we can see where it started. It blew up right here, went into the main floor. And look at this, guys. There's, like, nothing left. You can hardly even recognize that this was a building. The stairs just go up. And then there's nothing there anymore. Now, obviously, that whole thing was sitting on the top, but it is now gone. So can we just kind of hop over here? Look at that. So this was the uh, floor right above it. Now, what is even holding that up? Okay, so it's this wall right here uh, that was near the front entrance. I had, like, the explosives right over there, uh, but they didn't quite reach. And you can even see a whole bunch of the, uh, I think these are the floors... Uh, have actually collapsed down on themselves, and then of course, look at this guys, this is the entire top portion of it. I'm not too sure if we can actually get up inside of it, but obviously you can see what it looks like from down here, and this is probably my favorite spot right there. The exposed stairwell with all of the damage, the railing is gone. And look at this guys, I also want to show you just how far some of this stuff got thrown away from the blast site. So way over here, we even have some more debris. We've got some bricks and metal by the looks of it. And there's even something way over there off in the distance. So I gotta say, guys, the explosives are amazing. They unlock so much potential for builds that I am so excited for the future of this game. Now, obviously, guys, this has always been an issue in Scrap Mechanic, but that is the optimization of the game. How big can we get? How crazy can we get? without destroying our creations and the worlds that we're building in. Now, this was very close to something that was beyond the limits of the game, but I think because my computer is pretty decent, it was able to survive this, and I'm really happy with that. Uh, but obviously, this could be so much better. We could have seen that in real time without any of the frame loss, and it would have been beautiful and extremely epic. But guys, that is going to be today's video on the explosives. I think there's obviously so much more that we could do whether it be testing or more creations guys so like i said at the beginning of the video if you have any ideas for me when it comes to testing building something then definitely leave it down in the comments i look forward to seeing what you guys have for me uh, and of course guys if you did enjoy the video if you enjoyed the build if you are happy about these new explosives and scrap mechanic then make sure you leave a like on this video let the devs know on twitter as well that they're doing a great job i know i definitely will be uh, because I am so happy with this edition. They gave it to us early, and I think they did an amazing job. Uh, and uh, thank you so much, guys, for tuning into Endless Scrap Mechanic. If you want to see more Endless Scrap Mechanic, then make sure you subscribe to the channel, maybe even turn on notifications so you get the latest and the craziest coming from me in Scrap Mechanic. And, of course, guys, thanks for tuning in, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. So, bye for now.